of America is to be a great nation. This must become true. On August 28, 1963, a dream connected the collective spirit of a quarter million, a cultural jambalaya, white, black, and brown. They came from places like Jim Crow's Jackson, Mississippi, and Rock Hill, North Carolina, from New York City and Gary, Indiana, like never before here in Washington, D.C. 50 years later, are we still marching? Is the dream still alive? I'm Zachary Keish. District Matters starts now. It's good to have the opportunity to sit down with some young uh, black leaders in the community to really celebrate uh, this march on Washington. I know you guys all got a lot going on. Wes, you got an album dropping, right? We taking studio time right now? Uh, no, nah, man, the record's done. I want your love. My name is W. Ellington Felton. As a kind of labeled renaissance man, since the age of uh, 14 or so, I've been uh, a professional artist. My name is Natalie Randolph. I am a teacher and head football coach here at Coolidge High School. My passion is, is the kids. We're here to make sure that the kids succeed in life and harp on them. That winning games is, is, you know, icing on the cake. But we're teaching them, we're giving them knowledge no matter what the subject area. I appreciate you joining us, Janae. What, what's going on with the uh, preparations? A lot is going on. I'm Janae Ingram. I'm currently the DC Bureau Chief for National Action Network. Hey, Ebony. Yeah. I've always been concerned with justice and equality. I feel like the work that I do does make a difference. You know, mobilizing, communicating, talking about it. Glad to be here. I'm glad to be here, too. I feel like I can relax, you know. Um, it's not 1963 anymore. We got a black president. I feel like the dream's been realized, right? We can sit back and relax now? I don't think the dream has been realized. I think we've made progress toward that goal, but the, the actual dream has not been realized, and I think we still have a lot of work to do. I think, unfortunately, uh, with, with this generation, I think, unfortunately, it does. Um, but also, I think in this country, we've also been kind of conditioned and programmed to believe that tragedy is the only moment when we are united. So it's not necessarily just limited to like black people. We are not seeing the issues within our own community clear enough to, to think that they're urgent um, and, and doing something within us. We're waiting on something else and for someone else to do something. So, somewhat, um, I somewhat agree with that. I, I definitely think there is a sense of urgency. I think it's about whether people want to sacrifice or find it a reason to sacrifice their time, their energy to go out and march or um, serve as an advocate. Has this dream been realized? I'm afraid it hasn't. Things have improved. Uh, thank God he was here. I think we still have, um, you know, room to go. We still have a long way to go. We can do, you know, so much more out here. You know, starts with education, it starts at home. Coming up on District Matters. In 1963, the unemployment rate for blacks was 10%. Today, it's 13%. Okay, there's hard work involved in this. You have to set small goals, you know. I just always felt uncomfortable about the whole notion of, of racial segregation, of racism. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. So progress has been made? I think so, especially if you consider 50 years ago where we started. It has. I mean, I'm not saying that it's complete, but I'm saying I think we're heading in the right direction. A ways to go, or can we kind of, you wrap know, it up. wrap no. it up? No, no, uh, no we can't no, wrap it up just yet. Where do we go from here? I think it's up to each of us to display some sort of action. So whether you're doing something within your community, whether you're helping your neighbor out, or whether you're joining an organization like National Action Network, NAACP, Urban League, or even a small organization that's in your own community that doesn't have the big name or the big following, but is doing great work. I think all of us need to um, focus on action, what we can do individually, because we all have a responsibility to make sure that our communities uh, are better. You've got to really take responsibility for these kids because... How important is their education? Their education is essential. I mean, it's essential because nobody can do what they don't know. 
If they don't know, they won't do it. If they don't know, they won't fight it. Um, and a lot of these kids just do not know. And if they knew, they would go. But they don't know. More people need to spend more time, more effort teaching them about these issues and about what's affecting them. I tell people all the time, be careful of the peas in your life. Because the peas in your life, preachers, parents, politicians, professors, they are going to always tell you things that work for other people as examples of how your life is going to work. And really all they're trying to do is get you to buy into whatever their philosophy is or which direction they are. So we as people, that's the P you need to work, work on and focus on. We have to not limit education to just the traditional uh, you know, shell of uh, education and Absolutely. the institutions. And you know, yeah. we're just we're we're all educators. Yeah. We have an opportunity to reach out and to uh, and to play a role in someone's life. I think that's the that's the best thing that we can do. You know, it's our job. It's our um, it's our obligation, I believe, to make sure this dream continues to march forward. Thanks, guys.